And joining us now is Michael Bryant, the former Minister of Economic Development for the Government of Ontario, soon to be the new CEO of Invest Toronto. Welcome back. Good to be here. If, if you felt this sort of wave of relief go through you at 5 o'clock uh, Monday afternoon, it was because, poof, I became a former cabinet minister and the economic development minister became the premier, uh, what was economic development minister, premier of Ontario. It's in able hands. Don't you think? I, I'm, I, I was kind of waiting for the question where I would say, but he kind of did the job all the way along anyway, didn't ah, he? Yeah. But we'll just wait for that one. It is, you'll grant me, unusual for a 43-year-old cabinet minister who's been in for 10 years and people see, if I may say, as a bit of a rising star to quit in the middle of things. So why did you? I don't feel, uh, it's been 10 years. I got in uh, pretty early uh, and uh, loved every second of it, uh, really did. Uh, I, um, about a year ago, just started to get the itch to do something different. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know how. Uh, I was pretty busy, uh, so didn't have time to um, uh, go on a on a on a job hunt tour. Because being responsible for the auto bailout file yes. wasn't, wasn't busy enough. Precisely. Okay. Uh, and then uh, this opportunity arose, and uh, they starting had in you? January, uh, Kyle Ray came in to with a delegation uh, to talk about Councillor Kyle Ray. Kyle mm -hmm. Ray the chair of the economic committee at the city of Toronto, uh, talking about what the city's economic plans were. And uh, Kyle, you know, he enthuses, he and does. he enthused about mm -hmm. Invest Toronto and Build Toronto, and I thought that that Invest Toronto job sounds really cool. Soon enough, I'm having breakfast with uh, the mayor, uh, the chairman of the board of Invest Toronto. He's and your new boss. He's, uh, yes, the, si the simultaneously testing and um, uh, encouraging me to apply. I applied and kaboom. Here's Jim Coyle in the Toronto Star. Mm, you read my, this. My psychotherapist, yeah. <laughs> Not surprising after reading this. Bryant chafed under a government that demanded deference, adherence to script, and kept real power within a tight and closed circle. In truth, Bryant and Premier Dalton McGuinty were not likely ever to be kindred spirits. Bryant has a streak of Bart Simpson in him. McGuinty is more Wally Cleaver. Which, I mean, that's a great line. Jim is very good, I gotta say. Did your personal relationship with the Premier have anything to do with this decision? Zero. Uh, personal relationship with him was great. Uh, we, he, he gave me the opportunity I want, all the opportunities that I wanted. Also I, demoted you once, too. I, he gave me an opportunity through Aboriginal Affairs to do the stuff that I think is most near and dear to my heart over the past 10 years. But you guys aren't bosom buddies. We can say that. Come on. I, look, uh, he has been, it's always been good. Like, never been dragged on the carpet, never been, uh, uh, had my head bitten off. He's not a mercurial guy. Uh, it's, it's been nothing but genteel and affable. It has. Uh, it's been nothing but opportunities for me. He has backed me on some of the more controversial things I bring to the cabinet table, like human rights okay. reform but, overhaul. But, but every time a minister leaves in an unanticipated fashion, mm -hmm. which I think this fits the bill. Mm -hmm. People always speculate, oh, right. either his relationship with the Premier wasn't right. good or he's lost faith in the McGuinty government and the direction it's taking. Yeah. So that's why you ha I have to ask you right. you have to of respond. Course. Yeah. No. So no, it, no loss of faith in the McGuinty government's no. direction? Oh my God, no, 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 not at all. I mean, like, uh, I uh, always have, always will uh, think that that's the right direction. I, you know, I, I agreed with the economic direction, the justice direction, certainly Aboriginal affairs. And, and every other part of it. Okay. So, so that's, it's all about uh, making a personal decision uh, about what you want to do with your life. But as you know, you're in the game of optics. So yeah. talk to me about the optics of mm -hmm. Minister of Economic Development leaves in the middle of the worst economic development blank storm in 80 years right. for an economic development job with another level of government. And we're supposed to infer from that that everything was tickety-boo at Queen's Park. Does that test like push the credulity a little bit? No, maybe? no. I mean, firstly, uh, never a perfect time. Never, ever, ever a perfect time uh, to go. Uh, either things are going great and you got to finish the next thing, or things aren't going so great. Uh, if I could have timed this such that it was leading right up to the next election, I would have. But I remember what Frances Lankin said when she went to uh, United Way, former and NDP cabinet, former minister. NDP cabinet minister, and granted, she was in opposition at the time. It was uh, an incredible opportunity that she couldn't pass up. And it was the same for me. It was an incredible opportunity that I didn't want to pass up, and I couldn't pass up in terms of putting it off for well, a significant period of time. Let's find out more about it. What okay. is Invest Toronto? It is unique in that it is uh, at arm's length from the government, the municipal government in this case. Uh, it is focusing on the most diverse city in the world, uh, the capital of uh, commerce and industry for Canada. 
the city with arguably the most opportunity to leapfrog ahead of its competitors coming out of this recession. Uh, it is a complete startup uh, in that I am uh, the first employee. Well, what's it supposed to do? It is going to uh, bring in investment, market the city, allow uh, assist businesses to expand and build bridges between businesses and government, build bridges that I've seen firsthand uh, need to be built. So it's basically going to do what Rural Business Chicago did for Chicago, which is to, to give the city a, 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 another uh, needed jump start along with the other jump starts. Now there. you say it's unique, but doesn't that kind of sounds like what every city wants to do, right? Create links with business, bring business in, economic development. How is this different? It uh, firstly it consolidates all the economic development efforts of the city into one. Uh, so economic development is not spread out all over different uh, departments. N uh, number two, it, it, it's at arm's length. So this isn't uh, something where um, a councillor comes in and says, oh, I really need this thing in my ward. Uh, it's devoid of that, of the regionalism uh, within, the, within the boundaries, and which also allows uh, Invest Toronto to be super strategic. And strategic can be tough. Uh, Singapore does economic development the best. They are ruthless on their uh, strategy, and it means saying to some sectors, sorry, we're not there for you because our strategy is to focus on this, this, and this. Okay, let's get a little personal here. Do you mm -hmm. have performance standards in your contract? I have to bring in X number of dollars of economic development or else? No? Uh, no, uh, I certainly will lay out metrics in the fall. Uh, certainly will lay out um, what is expected to happen and I will deliver on those things, uh, but uh, no, it doesn't work that way. You get paid more though, right? Uh, yeah, more than I currently get paid, but less than a judge. Is that right? Yeah. So what's, you, you wanna say what the salary I, You know is? what, I can't say right now, just because my understanding is, is that it needs to be affirmed or something technical by the board, but it will be disclosed, it'll all be out, and it will be a number that you will find both fabulous and appalling and shocking <laughs> and makes sense. And no bonus for extra economic development or anything like uh, that? Not yet, but believe me, I'm working on it. <laughs> and if you're if you're suggesting that we do that, I will put that down. In well, I'm, just, I'm not making any suggestions. Yeah. I'm just wondering how you judge the effectiveness of, yeah. of how you do your thing. No, fair enough. Look, the, the, the board will expect certain uh, yeah, targets yard to be sticks. Hit. And, and what I need to do over the course of the summer is present a strategic plan in the fall, which includes those things. Do you know why they decided on you? I don't know uh, exactly. I do know that I um, uh, hopefully offer some uh, political experience, certainly experience in terms of how economic development uh, as an uh, almost like an industry works and doesn't work. Uh, and um, uh, it so happens right now I've got uh, knowledge of the provincial government of Ontario, let's hope, uh, and a good working, very good working relationship with Industry Canada and with the federal uh, industry minister, uh, thanks to a, a great experience together um, working on the auto file, if, if that can possibly be great, it was. This is Tony Clement. Tony Clement, and uh, I think that it's actually um, a, a time in which whatever skills I have to offer can uh, be leveraged to the advantage of the economy of Toronto. You gave a speech a few weeks ago mm -hmm. at the Canadian Club yeah. that got a lot of attention. It did. Uh, I don't Were know you there? I, I was not there, but I heard all about it, okay. and I saw it later uh, on video. Excellent. And we actually have a little clip of it right here. Could, could you put the website up as well? No? <laughs> We're calling. Where did I lose control of this? Yeah, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, everybody called it the reverse Reaganism speech. Yes. Uh, and uh, Well, let's take a, take a little snippet of it, and then we'll come back and chat. Michael, let's. if you would. Obamanomics is literally reverse Reaganism. Uh, these are his words. The question we ask today is not whether our government is too big or too small, but whether it works. So this is, uh, this is the dirigiste approach where the state is controlling the economy. You need to think de Gaulle, not Thatcher. Is reverse Reaganism how you intend to bring investment to Toronto? Uh, certainly deliver the existing reverse Reaganism, for sure. I mean, governments uh, have been making, providing economic uh, incentives for a very long time. Uh, the $2 billion fund of funds that's been uh, up and running in Ontario for some time uh, is not the kind of thing that I'm sure uh, Mike Harris uh, would have liked uh, in his time, certainly something that uh, Ronald Reagan didn't like in his time. But we're 
we're different. We're liberals, and there need to be liberal economic uh, approaches to the world. And this one, and the liberal economic approach that is this one, uh, you might call it Obamanomics, you might call it something else, is in, instead of just, just providing tax relief whereby everybody, the successful, the innovative, and the non-innovative, uh, get to uh, receive a tax break, in addition to that, the, the government will provide particular incentives in particular areas so as to grow a particular area of the economy. Needless to say, the Premier wasn't necessarily thrilled with the speech. He thought it was a bit off message. You're looking at me like now like you're shocked. I'm shocked there's gambling taking place in this establishment, Claude Rains. No, here's what the Premier said on May 26th, in fact. I'm a little more leery of picking specific businesses. I'm much more open to finding businesses in specific sectors. I think what Mr. Bryant was trying to say is that the days of governments quietly presiding over the gradual evolution of the economy are behind us. This, I mean, this was a bit off message from what the Premier has been saying all along, wasn't it? I, uh, look, he thought uh, so. He's, he's right. Uh, he's always right. Uh, let me say this. You don't uh, have to say that anymore. Yeah. You don't work for him anymore. No, but, uh, you know, we should be leery. And, and I, I agree that everybody should be leery of the idea of governments being in the investment business. But guess what? They are. Uh, and so if this is a wake-up call uh, to some people, uh, then that's great. But people saw it as the Michael Bryant is trying to pick winners and losers in the economy speech. Well, it was all about a uh, different way of approaching the economy, of, of, a, of a state industrial policy. Uh, it is one that recognized, I mean, irony, surely irony is not so dead uh, that, we can't is, say, that. Uh, that we can't say uh, reverse Reaganism uh, and uh, picking winners and losers part of the purpose of which is to turn that right-wing approach on its head. It was George W. Bush that actually started the bailout of the auto industry. It was not uh, Obama. And the point is, I know right-wingers hate it, but the reality is, is that the state is in there making choices and making investments to the betterment of the economy or not. Okay, we have lots of advice for you here, Please. Michael Bryant. Uh, here's Glenn Murray, former mayor of Winnipeg, former liberal candidate federally who was on uh, one of our programs at the Monk Center very recently, and he had this to say about how you make economic development happen or not. Roll tape. There's a fear of private capital in the city and in the city government and a laziness of private capital from leaders to actually embrace it. Union Station has gone from being a great visionary dynamic to being the messiest process I've ever seen, like the most incompetent managed process. Now the excitement is, the excitement is, we're gonna get private money in to mobilize a retail center, and when you read the articles, people are apologizing because, you know, we're not gonna lose public control. He says City Hall's kind of afraid of private investment. Is that true? I, look, I'm gonna, I, I, I am firstly gonna find out. I don't agree with him, but I'm gonna find out. Secondly, uh, when we talk about the state making investments and private and public investments, it's never just one or the other. It's about leveraging some uh, private investments when it comes to, uh, like just for example, the government in the Next Generation of Jobs Fund will provide that last 15%, in some cases, or up to 15% of an overall investment in order to land the plant or the operation. Because if you don't, if you don't, then it's going to go somewhere else. And that's the reality of the global economy. The relationship, though, between City Hall and Queen's Park, which you've had a front row seat at mm -hmm. for the last 10 years, has occasionally been very, very strained. It's not bad right now, but sometimes it's been pretty terrible. Sure. Uh, what do you want to do about that? Well, uh, if I can play a positive role, I will. But I'm out of the political business now uh, directly, that's for sure. Uh, any, if, if, in fact, you had a situation where the municipal government and the federal government just got along swimmingly, it would mean that they weren't doing anything. It would mean that they were only operating at the margins and trying to reinforce the status quo. So, you know, you've got a mayor with a vision, you've got a premier with a vision, uh, they're not going to agree on everything. Uh, and, you know, I would say that both of them, if they were sitting here, and they're not, of course, would say that they have a great working relationship. They always say that, but the fact is, you know, Conservative Prime Minister, Liberal Premier, former New Democrat as Mayor of Toronto, I guess we shouldn't be shocked that they don't see the world the same way all the time. But how much of sort of playing peacemaker is your job going to be? Uh, it's not um, one that I explicitly expect to happen. If I can end up playing a role, great. But uh, you I got to get them talking to each other, don't they? Sometimes they don't. They are talking to each they other. They have the, the silliest hissy fits they, from time they, to time, don't they? They, they have a lot more good days uh, than not good days, and I think that's just going to continue. Okay, let's uh, finish up on this. Uh, what do the following have in common? You're a student of political history: John Turner, Jean Chrétien, Stephen Harper, Ernie Eves. 
Well, uh, you know, I came on your quiz show and I said I hate, <laughs> like, I hate quizzes. I, I, I hate, remember that, yeah. yeah. okay, so can I just, like, uh, say, like, F? Um, I, I have no idea, but I have a feeling you're going to help you, me. You uh, know where I'm going with this. These are all people, obviously, yeah. who were in public life. You know this, so why yeah. didn't you yeah, answer yeah, 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 they, yeah. They, they were in public life, they left public life, they returned to public right. life and won right. the leadership of their party right. when they came back. Right. Everybody I talk to says that's the plan for you, to which you say. I say I am focused on what I'm doing for the next, um, certainly, five years. Uh, that is, you don't leave your seat and you don't leave cabinet unless you're really serious about doing that, um, and unless you're really serious about uh, leaving public life. Uh, some people leave and think they might come back, and then they find out, I uh, hope it's fair to say like Frank McKenna, that they like private life a lot, and they don't want to go back. Oh, but he's tempted all the time, and you know he is, and every time there's a vacancy, his name's always at the top sure of the Sure he list. is, and if I gave you some Marshall-esque never, 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 never thing, you would say I don't believe you, and <laughs> I, look, it is not where my head is at at all. I'm just focused on invest. Uh, everything I've done, at least for the last 10 years, has been a pretty all-consuming, intensive, I'm gonna do this and that's what I'm gonna do. And that's all I'm thinking about. Good luck with the new gig. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me on. I'll be back with the strategic plan for Invest Toronto. You've gotta learn to come out of your shell a little more though. That's the thing.